Child sex trafficking is a difficult topic to discuss, but it's necessary, especially when it comes to how kids become victims in the first place. So what we see is a kid can be a, a runaway. The kid ran away from home and now the kid's hungry. You've been out here in the streets, you've been couch surfing, you're hungry. Someone comes along, rides alongside you and says, hey, you hungry? I'll take you to McDonald's and get you something to eat. Rita Cavanis with the Hope Project says that's an example of how it all starts. Vulnerable kids being taken advantage of. Before you know it, that, that kid thinks that they're boyfriend, girlfriend, and they're dating, and I'm in love, and then all of a sudden, the water bills do, is what this person says. If you love me, you'll go and deal with, you know, blah, 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 just once. What comes off as someone being nice is actually called grooming before they ask for something in return. And before you know it, you're doing that with, you know, this person and it continues on. It becomes this vicious cycle for these youth. It's not the typical scenario shown in movies and TV shows. I think a lot of people think it's kidnapping. Yeah. Being yeah, taken from somewhere, yeah, being absolutely. locked in a basement somewhere with handcuffs and um, the reality is, is that these people are walking among us. Yeah. But it's a real one happening right in front of us here in West Michigan with a number of arrests in the past decade, including these two men. Eddie Jackson was sentenced to 30 years in federal prison for recruiting teenage girls to work as child prostitutes in Muskegon from July to August of 2012. Those girls were in the 8th, 9th, and 10th grades. And Michael Clayton out of Battle Creek is serving a life sentence for holding an underage girl who had been a runaway captive in a home while forcing her to have sex and consume hard drugs. Yeah, it's an issue because it's happening, right? I mean, we have kids that are being used in child pornography, um, local kids who are being used in that. Um, and then that, the reality is, is that we don't want it happening here. The Hope Project helps victims of sex trafficking, serving women and girls as young as 11 years old. I'd say what, it's about like 15 or so survivors of sex trafficking, mm -hmm. minors that we're serving currently. Um, and then with women, it's over 130 survivors of trafficking. Many of those women were trafficked in their youth. It's an issue that she says can be prevented with the help of the community. The community can get mad about the issue, mm -hmm. uh, which stands for mentoring, advocating, and donating. Because like we don't exist if we don't have donations mm -hmm. coming into our organization. And so that is one huge way that you can make an impact is by giving your finances. But also giving your time. You know, pay attention. You know, some, we're so distracted sometimes. We are we got our phone, our heads stuck in our phones, our faces in our phones all the time. Look up, pay attention. You know, if you don't know what's going on, get, get, in, get involved. And confronting a tough topic head on by being willing to learn more and help those who need it most. But if the kids don't know, if the, if the community doesn't know, you know, then the kids don't know. Our thing here is we want to break generational curses, you know, generational things that happen in life. So if we can teach you young, you know, and get your, get your mind together when you're young, we can break that cycle. And, you know, a vulnerable youth might not end up being sex trafficked.